Um, I would like to um, kind of present the book of Job in a totally different light than what you've been taught. But first off, I want to lay out the foundation. Okay, the foundation started when God laid the cornerstone. Okay, now this is in Job 38, 6. God laid the cornerstone, and the cornerstone in the foundations of the earth was laid when the planet Thea hit the earth. So the rock is embedded in the earth. That is the cornerstone. Our minds can't comprehend how big our God is. So the earth and the cornerstone are together. The, the cornerstone is the two holy mountains, Jerusalem and Eden. So, um, so Jesus is the rock embedded in the earth. Jesus is the rock. In Isaiah 1.10 it says, enter into the rock. Okay, the rock has caves, and, and uh, it, it's the safety. The, uh, Isaiah 66, verses 8 and 9 says that the, the earth, shall the earth be made forth to, to birth in one day. Now, I'm not going to read that for sake of time, but um, the earth will be birthed in New Jerusalem. Okay, so uh, the earth will also birth the new children. Okay, which will be the children of faith, the Joshua's that entered into the new, the promised land, the new kingdom. But I wanted to go back uh, to um, how this all started. The, the foundation, the cornerstone was laid, then the sons of God. In Job 38, 5, it says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, this was before the fall. Uh, this is what's real important. It says, all the sons of God. So, you know that's before the, the fall, when they all sang for joy. Because one-third of the angels was taken during the fall, when Lucifer deceived one-third of the angels. So, um, all the sons of God sang for joy. And the morning star was um, Lucifer. He was, a, he, was a, he was a morning star. Okay, that's in Job 38, 5. Okay, so so we have to realize that in the book of Job, at the very first part, when it when Satan came before God, it was after the fall. He was testing Job. So um, so we understand why we had to be tested. Job four eighteen says, "Behold, he puts no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly." So it's important to notice um, that. Um, that Job had been uh, tested, okay, and we're all being tested. So, um, in uh, Genesis 1, uh, we can see that Satan was a created being. All the sons of God were created beings until their test. Okay, in Job, I mean, Genesis 1, 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. Okay, so so God created first. And then in Genesis 2, 7, it says that God formed. He formed man from the dust. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Okay, so it says, I want to read that one more time. Uh, Genesis 1, 27. So God created man. So so the, the angels were called man. The sons of God were called man. That's the name of God's creation. He never changed the name of his creation. He just gave it different names. Angels, cherubs. Um, uh, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay, this is very important because I wanted to read you this one. In Timothy... Um, we can see that uh, 1 Timothy, I'm going to find this for you real quick. Okay, it says in 1 Timothy, now this confirms that verse, that mankind was created first. Sons of God were created first before the fall, okay? Then, after the fall, mankind had to be tested. Um 1 Timothy 2, 13. For Adam was formed, then Eve. 
was for Adam was first formed, then Eve. Okay, now I want to go back to Genesis 1, 27. And I want to read you that again. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Okay, so God created male and female together as one in unity. So they were created as one in unity. Both of them were together. Okay, so this, we'll read First Timothy again. Uh, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. Okay, so now you can go to Genesis 2, 7, and you can read this. Genesis 2, 7 tells us, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust. See, man was created first, uh, formed first, after he was created. He was created, then he was formed for the test. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Okay, that's in Genesis 2, 7. So we see there's mankind, which was angels, sons of God, but that was the test. That was the, all the sons of God sang for joy. Um, the morning star sang for joy. Um, Job, um, Job 38, 5. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, this was the created beings. Now, we know that Lucifer was a created being. He was not a formed being. So, Lucifer's test was in heaven. He, was the, he fell. He was not able to be redeemed because he was not formed. Okay? Because we're formed, we are being tested. All the, the angels are being tested. They're sons of God. Um, now, we all start out as sons of God because we have a very, uh, God has put his, um, his, he has blessed the, um, all creation, everything that has breath, he has blessed. That means filled with God, okay? Up until accountability, the age 12, all the little children are blessed. They have God in them. But after 12, then they have to uh, make that decision on their own because the Spirit of the Lord is leaves these children, and they have to um, make that decision to ask Jesus in their heart because that's everyone's test. Okay, so I wanted to share this with you. And it says, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters of the sea, and let fowls multiply in the earth. Now that is um, animals. All animals have got the Spirit of God in them. So, um, so that's amazing that, to know that when we're blessed, in Acts 3.26, we can see that, um, that God said, He gives us clear um, instructions on, on, uh, on why God came, why Jesus came. And let me, let me give you this scripture because I want to share this with you. Acts 3.26. This is very important. And I should have wrote it down, but I'm going to read it to you. Acts 3.26. This is a King James Version Bible. That's all I read from is the King James. Until you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. So when you see the word blessed, that means to be filled with God, okay? In turning away every one of you from his iniquities, turning away from our sins. He, he, when, we, when we repent and humble ourselves, then God can fill us. Only till we repent and humble ourselves can God fill us with his presence. And um, after the age of accountability, before the age of accountability, we're just all blessed, okay? And the age of accountability is probably around 12. I can't, I can't prove that, but Jesus was 12 when he went into the temple. So I'm thinking that that's probably why they told us 12. Okay? So um, Job is, is a book just full of information. Um, Job describes dinosaurs in the book of Job. Um, and then he, of course, he lets us know we're being tested. Okay? And what I wanted to share with you is... Um, in Job, I love the book of Job because it's got so much wisdom in it. And we need a lot of wisdom right now. This is a time that 
that we really need to draw close to God and we need to listen to what he's trying to tell us. Okay, Job in Job um, 42 verses 13, this is what's been so clearly misunderstood. When God lists uh, these three daughters um, uh, in um, Job uh, 14, uh, 42, 14, and he called the name of the first Jeremiah, and the second Keza, and the third Karen, and I can't even say that word, okay? Karen, uh, something, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, these three daughters are listed in the genealogy. And throughout the Bible, you're not going to hardly ever find women listed in the Bible unless they're the, um, the ones that um, are the first ones, okay? Because they always list the names of the men first. It's just, it's, it's not very often that you see a woman's name listed unless, unless it was Queen Esther probably. I don't even know, but, but I'm just, I'm telling you that um, because of these three women being listed, this threw up some red flags to me. So I did a little bit more studying. I studied to find out, like, why was these women listed, okay? So I wanted to share this with you because this has been so greatly misunderstood, okay? Um, obviously, there must have been... Um, fire from heaven during the time of Job, because um, it says, let's see, I, mean, I wanted to share this with you, um, okay, while he, okay, and let's see, and there came a messenger unto Job, and said, the oxen were plowing, and the, the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them, and took them away, and yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only and escaped. I only and escaped alone to tell thee. Okay. Now he's saying he's the only one there in that situation. While he was yet speaking, uh, him and and the ones that died were only ones there in that situation. But this is very important to listen to. While he was yet speaking, there was another one also came also another, and he said, "The fire of God is fallen from heaven." So that obviously was uh, a meteorite, okay? And before a meteorite happens, you're going to have strong winds. You're going to have winds that are very strong, okay? So obviously the women were pretty smart women because they ran, okay? Uh, the fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and, and consumed them. And I only... Uh, escaped alone to tell thee, okay, because the ones in the house did die. While he was spe yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made us three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them all away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only and escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Okay? Okay, now, obviously, he wasn't in the house, or, the, or, the, um, or he would have gotten killed, too. Okay? The wind would have killed him, too. Okay? So, um, he, obviously, when the wind started picking up, these women got out of there. Because um, the, the man did, too. This one man that was not the son, okay? Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, okay? The wind precedes the, the fire of God, okay? Now, this was the fire of God that fell first, but uh, the wind uh, always precedes um, this kind of stuff, okay? So, um, that's a little bit backwards, but... Um, and see, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men. Okay? This is what I wanted you to see. And it fell upon the young men. It doesn't say anything about falling upon the young women. And they are dead. Okay? The young men, the seven young men, are dead. Okay? And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. 
Okay, so this is what I wanted you to see. The seven young men died, okay, because the great wind from the wilderness smote the house and, and it fell. Now, obviously, when this wind first started, then uh, the women got out of there. They left because their names would not have been in the genealogy um, at the very last uh, of Job 42. And he called the name of the first, okay? They would not have been listed first. The, the, the new sons would have been listed first, and the new daughters would have been listed first. And they wasn't. None of the, the, none of the grandsons were listed. So when people are taught that, that Job got ten more sons, that's not true. He had grandsons because we can go back to um, uh, in Genesis, um, Genesis uh, where uh, Laban and uh, Laban calls in Genesis thirty one twenty eight. Laban calls Jacob's children his sons when they are real in reality his grandsons. They wasn't Laban's sons. Genesis 31, 28, and I will read that to you because I do want to share that with you because um, we need to realize that, and they always called, um, you know, the, the children, even if they were the grandchildren, they called them sons, just like son of David, okay? Jesus, um, okay, let's see, okay? Um, what did I say that was? Job 30, 31, 28. Okay? I want to read that to you right quick. 31, 28. Um, and has not suffered me. Now, now see, Jacob is taking the, his children, Jacob's children, his grandchildren, the Laban's grandchildren, and his wives, Rachel and Leah, and he's leaving... Um, uh, Laban's country, and he's going. He's going um, toward the um, the west. Okay, and has thou not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. Okay, um, so um, Laban is calling these children his sons, and and of course they are his daughters. But these grandchildren are not his sons, so um, so we can go back to Job and we can um, we can see that um, Job his breath was strange to his wife. Now, what does that mean? Okay, this is a King James version, and and so we we really don't understand a lot of times what you know we don't understand exactly what they meant. Okay, let me read this. Job nineteen seventeen. My breath is strange to my wife, though I entreat it for the children's sake of my own body. Okay? His children, his daughters, and the, his grandsons, um, he, was, he was kind to his wife, but she wouldn't kiss him. My breath is strange to my wife. In other words, they did not have a relationship after all the children died. She would not have a relationship with her husband. She wouldn't even kiss him, okay? She was so angry, she wouldn't even kiss him. Um, because she said in Job, um, uh, she was mad. And I don't know if she's mad, at, I guess she's mad at God, but she's probably mad at him too. And he it says, and um, let's see, then said his wife, this is Job 2, 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? curse God and die. So that was a word curse. That was a word curse that his wife was trying to put on Job. Well, that's why God told Satan, you can touch his body, but you can't kill him because that was a word curse. So anyway, I, I hope that this teaching has been helpful to you. I really wanted to t touch on this, um, uh, that Job did not lose all of his children. He, lo he, had, he lost seven of them. The seven boys died. And, um, and Job, we can see the seven boys died. Job, um, Job 1, 19. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men. It does not say it fell upon the young women. 
and they are dead, and only I am, I only am alone, I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Okay, now the first messenger that came, um, I'm, he, he couldn't have um, told him how many people were in the house, the second messenger, because of the simple fact that if he'd been in the house, he'd have died too. So he, he knew, he knew the house was fallen, but he didn't know um, that the young girls had escaped. So he's given a false uh, message. And so I just hope that this is really a blessing to you, and I hope, I hope that this helps you uh, realize that even in the first part of Genesis, man was created first, sons of God was created first, that's creation of man, and then they were formed. And uh, if this has helped, I, I hope that it's a blessing, and I thank you, and I pray to God that you will um, study for yourself, because really, truly, that's what we're supposed to do. The Bible tells us, but you have no need for anyone to teach you, for the anointing, which is God, Jesus in us, the Ten Commandments in us, that abides within you, teaches you all things. So that's how I learned, is being taught by God. So I pray to God that you will hear this and you will receive it. Thank you.